Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another one of my Mythic Mobs tutorials. Today, this is actually going to be an item-based tutorial rather than a mob or mechanic. Well, I guess technically we're still covering mechanics, but this is going to be for items as I said. Now, one thing I want to mention, this will only work if you have Mythic Artifacts, the add-on for Mythic Mobs. Because, um, by default, based on the plugin, you cannot use items uh, you cannot use abilities on items, however, if you have Mythic Artifacts, you can. And it is a paid plugin, so I apologize in advance, but for anybody else who's using this, I think it's going to help you tremendously. Uh, I had this revelation literally overnight. I know, crazy. So, uh, I want to go ahead and get started. This is a fairly complicated tutorial, so if you don't know much about uh, how to set up scores and such like that, I recommend uh, playing with other stuff and getting yourself more familiar with mechanics. However, if you are comfortable with what you know how to do, then, uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. So, here I have myself a diamond sword, which I call the fire sword. The reason being is because it uses a fire ability whenever I hit something with it. However, this is going to be cooldown based, so, um, if you're looking to make custom items with their own cooldowns, this is the tutorial for you. Let's go ahead and jump into the file here. As you can see, I have three different things set up here. One is item timer. This is basically going to be the cooldown timer itself, um, which I highly recommend making universal for all your items so players aren't just switching between item to item using all the abilities at once. They will all be on a universal cooldown timer. Uh, I know on a previous server I was on, somebody requested something like this to the plugin dev. Well, I figured out how to do it using mythic artifacts. So, <coughs> let's go ahead and uh, talk about the others real quick. Here is your cooldown message. Now, I put it as message 1 because it, um, well, there's a second part to it that's only going to activate once a certain score has been reached, and we'll cover that in just a minute. Uh, you're going to want to set these on timer of 20 because 20 is equivalent to one second. And the third thing I have here, this is the actual ability that my sword uses, which I called auto ignite because I consider it auto attacks because uh, I'm a MOBA player, so you know I'm used to just basic things like this being called an auto. Um, but it ignites them whenever I hit them, which is what this is. Uh, we're gonna. This just means we're going to be calling the ability based on ourselves, so our conditions, which is going to be very important. Uh, realistically, you can make it whatever ability you want with whatever trigger you want, whether it be on hit, on swing, on use, on damage, whatever the case. But I did on hit, so that way it only activates whenever I hit something. So let's go ahead and talk about the actual skills themselves here. First is the timer. Now one thing you're going to want to set up is your condition. Score objective equals your objective name here. And you're going to want to make sure the value is greater than zero. So that means this will only be used if your score is one or higher. So once it reaches zero, this timer is no longer going to be used. Um, and as you can see here, I have modified target score, objective equals item timer. Uh, action equals subtract and a value of one. As I mentioned, this is going to be happening every second, which is this 20 ticks here. So every second it's going to go down. Um, it will not do it if you have not used the ability yet. That's what this condition is set here for. Um, next we're actually going to go into our actual ability. So here, as you can see, I have a different condition. Score, objective, item timer, value equals zero. One main thing to notice, this says equals zero, this says equals greater than zero. That means once it's at zero, your item is no longer on cooldown and your ability can be used again. Which, as you can see here, it ignites the target for 100 ticks or 5 seconds. Here, it will also change our target score, or our item timer objective, back to 10 second cooldown. Do know you can set this uh, as big or as small as you want. The This is going to be your um, time in seconds. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it can be as big or small as you want. These, it will not affect these. These are universal. Zero will always be your winning number. So 
Uh, if I set this to 15, after 15 seconds, once it, reach, once it reaches zero, I can use the ability again. 10 seconds, same thing, 5 seconds. It doesn't matter, as long as this is set to zero. So, what else I've got going on here? I just added a little action message, so that way... I don't know, I thought it added kind of a cool flair, like... Uh, let me go ahead and spawn in Legion, and I'll show you. Yeah, he's kind of my go-to dummy now. But, right above my health bar, right about there you are going to see a little message pop up saying the name of my ability that I used, which we called Auto Ignite. So, boom, attack. If you saw for a quick second, it said Attack Ignite. One thing you can do, if, you know, if you're familiar with title messages, you can do that. Uh, just make a big title message here saying the name of your ability that you used. And then the cooldown, as you can see right there, will start. Ability on cooldown, blank seconds. Now, since we're using artifacts, it's very important to know that this will only work, one, if you're in survival mode, and two, if um, it will only go off cooldown if you're still holding the item. Now, if you have multiple items with multiple cooldowns, then no matter what item you're holding, it'll still go on the cooldown as long as your timer objective name is uh, universal across all items that you use. So, if I were to make, like, a wand, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this, and uh, actually I'm going to make it an axe. Fire axe. Oops, I guess I didn't make, make it capitalized. But either way though, let me go ahead and reload and give that to myself. I get fire axe. Fire a axe. Oh, well, oops. Either way though, you will see, as long as I switch, they're both going to be on the same cooldown timer, doesn't matter what one I'm using, as long as this objective stays the same um, in any item that you are using. As you can see, item timer, item timer, both call on the objective of item timer. So that's how you set up that part. Again, you can switch the action message to be a title message so that way your timer is going down here and the ability is up here rather than them fighting for the same spot down below. You can also make it just be a normal message like any of these. However, I personally don't recommend it, especially if you're on a fairly populated server, as you will see um, a bunch of chat just go right up through your screen. Not worth it. Um, so, last we're going to talk about the actual cooldown messages, because this this is actually the complicated part right here. Now let's go back to our items. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, because we do not need it anymore. So, let me reload. This is now obsolete, we're just going to put that up there. Back to our sword. Okay, so... CD message 1 at self on timer of 20. Like the timer, it's uh, it's going to activate every second. The reason is, is because if you remember seeing that item ability on cooldown thing, that's exactly what this is. Ability on cooldown. Here you're going to have target.score. whatever your objective name is. For me, it was item timer. Um, and then inside of an action message too, ability on cooldown dash. Uh, objective seconds. And it's going to use it at self. Now what we have going on here is a little addition to it. So after like 1.25 seconds, or just say a second and a quarter I guess, it's going to call upon this skill every time this is used. However, that does not mean that this skill will be used with it. And let me explain for a moment here. The reason it won't be used is because so long as the timer is still above zero, this skill cannot be used because this skill has to be equal to zero, the same way your actual ability does. Now the reason is, for this, after one second passes and it reaches one second left, it will come up with a message saying, ability ready. But it has to be off cooldown first for that to work. So once it reaches zero and is no longer one or higher, you will get the message ability ready, and your ability will also be ready to go. Let's go ahead and look at that. I know you've probably seen it a couple of times so far, but we're just going to go ahead and show it again. So here we go. Boom. Attack ignite. Ability on cooldown. Seven. Six. And for proof of concept, I want to show you guys that you still do have to hold the item for it to count, because uh, it will not use abilities so long as you're not holding it. So as you can see, 5, 4, switch, switch back, and now it's counting back down from 3 even though I waited like 2 seconds there. You do have to be holding it, 
and there's the ability ready message. And whenever that comes up, boom, ignite. One more countdown just to show you, seven, six, five. As you can see, I'm hitting him, nothing's happening because our score is at two, one, and no longer on cooldown, boom, ignited. So this is a pretty universal concept. You can use it for any item, any ability. Um, I personally highly recommend making all your timers be exactly the same objective just to uh, prevent going from like sword to axe to wand to something else and just constantly spamming abilities. They will all be on the same global timer right there. However, that's up to you what you want to do. Maybe you do it different for melee items versus magic versus range. I don't know. That is entirely at your discretion. This is just a general timer tutorial for cooldowns. If this tutorial helped you out, make sure to uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if there's anything else you would like to see covered. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there right now that I don't have the most time in the world to keep doing these tutorials. However, that does not mean that I will be stopping. Um, I know a lot of you have gotten a lot of use out of these. I've seen it a lot in my comments sections below, and it makes me very happy to read some of your responses. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, well... You know what I say, I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.